Hey guys, Tyler here. Welcome back to Inscription Casey's Mod. We have a new starter deck on level 6, and this one seems like a lot of fun. A Mantis God with two ringworms. Seems absolutely wild. I also unlocked the more difficult modifier, which is more and stronger opposing creatures in all battles. I need, now need 60 challenge points to win. So I know I'm going to do one of these, for sure. I want to do bosses award regular cards. And I kind of want to just do one, just to get a feel for the difficulty change. I'm willing to do boss battles being totem battles. And wait, this is new. You do not start with the fish hook item. Since when did I start with the fish hook item? Well, I don't want to check that then. I might as well just have regular battles be replaced. I exceed it a little bit, but I don't want to do any of the other ones. This this is fine. The, the other modifiers aren't the big deal. I think that the ones I chose aren't too bad, except for the difficulty one, which is something I don't know. So, this is very funny timing, I have to admit, because all of the seven previous inscription videos were recorded in one sitting, just to make sure I could have some videos re ready for Christmas break. Well, I'm back for Christmas, and this is just in time for me to get the Ringworm deck. And I may have learned that the ringworm does something when sacrificed to a campfire. So this is the perfect time for me to come back because now I can do that. And as for my starting cards, I guess I'll do a porcupine and... I'm not too impressed with any of these, to be honest. It might just have to be bullfrog. So let's go bullfrog and suffer. And I guess I'll be looking for campfires. Now, I do have the fish hook, which seems like a massive improvement. Hey, why not just start with a campfire? I might as well take every campfire I can get. Because apparently, when you warm a ringworm by the fire, and then hopefully get it to be sacrificed, it just completely destroys the dudes around them. In an instant, several survivors set upon the beast. Blood and bones littered the campsite as the poor creature was torn limb from limb. Sick to your stomach, you turned away from the carnage and retreated. Oh, so nothing happens right away. I... Yeah, so this is all new to me. But apparently the next campfire is going to be a little bit different. Let's go to a battle. There was also a chance that didn't happen because the ringworm could have just been buffed twice. I could have won the toss-up, but that's fine. I drew my mantis god all is well. Let's get going on that. Mantis god, yeah, right here is fine. Start hitting away on that, and I should wipe them out next turn. So, this deck is really funny. I got the strongest creature in the game, and then two creatures that are pretty much only used for campfire stuff in this game. When I got a ringworm for the very first time, my impression was that it was for the uh, trials right before the final boss fight, where... Oh god, I have to do the, the trapper. Whatever. Uh, I thought it was for those trials where if you have a ring you pass, and a ringworm counts as a ring. But apparently those trials don't exist anymore, and the only purpose now is something I never did during the main game, and that would be going to the campfire. So, with that in mind, now with the new campfire, because they ate a ringworm, something should be different. You came across the remains of a small settlement. No living person remained. It must have been something they ate. Hmm. The fire sputtered on in spite of their absence. So now I can permanently buff creatures twice without any potential downside. But what's sad is that I kind of want the downside, in a way. The ringworm... Hmm. Is pretty useless on its own. I wouldn't mind if that gets sacrificed. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to take the extra health, put it on the mantis god so it doesn't get one shot. And there's no risk. Can I keep doing it? No. So I can only do it twice. And that's as much as the game will let me do. But now every campfire is insane. So I'm going to target those as much as possible. And then, of course, buff up the Mantis God. Just to see how much stats I can get on that bad boy. Bad news is I did not draw the Mantis God. So. Here's how I'm going to play this. I'm going to go Squirrel. Bullfrog. And hope that I can draw my Mantis God soon. This should be nice and blocking. Too bad they move. Ah, oh, but I should be okay. Show me the Mantis God. I got the Mantis God. Okay, we can still win this. Now, do I use my Squirrel or sacrifice my Bullfrog? 
I'm fairly certain that I can wait. There's not too much of a threat right now, but I mean, they are becoming a bit more and more of a threat. It's really tough to say. Either way, getting the Mantis God down now with the extra health should be awesome. I think I will block the Porcupine. Might as well. Although I could have the Pelt block. It's all fine, though, I'm sure. Alright, so. It's Mantis God versus the world. How do we do? Let me first draw for my deck. Because neither of these are getting summoned this turn. But soon they will be. And I can just let it ride. Hurts a little bit, but I get some killing down. And I will just barely make it out of this. So now, with the Porcupine, I think I will just have this be in the open lane. Just preserve my items. Do some killing. Keeping the Mantis got alive. And coming out with a win. Just barely. I mean, this is as close as it gets. Yeah, he concedes. Um, I'm not going to accept it just in case I get some overkill teeth. I don't know how it's going to add up, though. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to get exact amount of damage, so. Fair play. Hey, a win is a win. Didn't use any items. That's what matters. Let's see now. I do need some good stuff in my deck. Hopefully, well, Pronghorn's okay, but I'm not sacrificing. Oh, these are all two costers. Pronghorn is pretty good, though, I have to admit. I... Get that on, well, literally anything, and then I'm happy. Or if I just buff the attack of Pronghorn, that's also good. So I'm going to take it. Anything with Bifurcation. Uh, and of course, I'm just going to hit every campfire. I, the Sacrifice Altar is fantastic, but whatever. Uh, the fire looked welcoming as always. They're permanently gone, possibly. I think I am just going to buff up the Mantis God first. And then worry about the rest of my deck. And now, yeah, now we can take on the fight. Because if I draw the Mantis God right away, it's an instant win. Which, admittedly, is a little boring. But but now we're going to beef up the rest of our deck. We've got, yeah, pretty much one nutty draw. I want more than one nutty draw. Show me more nuts. And a little bit of overkill teeth. I need to get to a trader soon so I can get the damn rabbit pelt out of my deck. Don't know if that's going to happen, though. So let's see, a bat. Um, this is tough. Black goat means I can get out the pronghorn on turn one. This does damage equal to the number of cards in my hand, which is also solid. I think I would like for the tentacles. Dealing damage equal to the cards in my hand is sometimes good, at least. I think I want, I don't know what I want. Health or attack. The warm light of the campfire was a welcome sight. No hungry survivors. Okay, with health, I could buff up this tentacle thing. Yeah, since it's probably going to have a lot of attack, I'm probably going to have three or more cards in my hand. It makes sense to have it have five health. It's a pretty beefy creature then. Next thing I want to have more health is most likely the porcupine. Alright, I get a pack rat now. That's, well, not a bad sacrifice at least. Time for the prospector. Alright, well, I don't know when I'm going to want to use the Mantis God. But at some point, surely. The Prospector's a very tough one when you only have a single threat in your deck. Um, but there's a lot to like. Here's how I'm going to play this. I'm going to get the Pronghorn down right now. And then get the Rabbit Pelt here to soak up two damage. And just accept that it's going to die. And that way the pronghorn stays where it's at right now, which is perfectly fine by me. So now it's going to move, and then my pronghorn will move, being able to kill the coyote. I do want to look for the mantis god. Especially since the pronghorn does not kill right now. I found it, so now I'm going to start looking for squirrels. Yeah, so get you out of the way. Coyote, coyote's a little sketch. Okay, if I get two free damage right now, I might as well... Well, I might as well drop the Porcupine since I do get him here. Yeah, so it's going to look like this. Porcupine, three damage, and then next turn I'll have Mantis got down, which seems very favorable. Yeah, yeah, there's gold in them cards. Perfectly good by me. Honestly, could not have asked for a cleaner setup myself. 
might as well get it in the open lane. Why not? It's three damage. I'm going to get him next turn. Get him. Yeah, it's too late for that to matter. Well, I guess I do some killing right now. Okay. I don't quite win yet. I'm about to get some squirrels from the pack meal, so I'm content with just drawing from my hand. And I'm not even close to being in danger of death. Yeah, the mule in her pack. And now I'm about to win. Let's see how much overkill I can get. Well, the most damage I can do is by first using the tooth thing. And then summoning the pack mule. Now that there's an empty item slot. What do I get? Bones! Um, not bad. Oh, I could have played Corpse Maggots. Whoops. My mistake. I don't know why I care too much about this, because I generally try to avoid the Trapper. I think the Trapper is the single worst event, just because you have garbage added to your deck. Um, and the only way to get it out is by going to the Trader, but sometimes you also get garbage from the Trader, so it's just not favorable for that reason. Between these, there's some interesting options. Mealworm is a new card, I believe. When a card bearing the sigil is sacrificed, it adds its stat values to the card it was sacrificed for. This sounds like pretty good campsite fodder, but what do I know? Actually, this sounds amazing with campsites. You buff the stats on this thing, and then you sacrifice it to another beast, and that gets the amazing stats? Yeah, this is like the perfect thing to buff with campfires. Now we're in the Winterlands. The snow line, if you will. I'll take one of these cards. Surely. Elk, Turkey Vulture, Rattler. Mm. I'm gonna reroll. I'm not a big fan of those right now. Oh god. It's also expensive! I didn't want expensive things. I think the play then is Turkey Vulture because I have bones. Is it a consumable item? At least I get halfway there. Alright, I get another pack rat, don't I? Oh god. The second pack rat. That's dangerous. <laughs> I see a mycologist coming up, but it's- Oh! A mycologist or a campfire! Come on! The toughest decision of the century. See, it was a fun decision and another fun decision, but it's less new. Well, let's at least get the quick win so I don't really have to think too much here. Thank you, Mantis God. I need to thin out my deck or I just need to have a way to um, curate my Mantis God. I need a way to more consistently draw it. Oh, this is so sad. This is so sad. So on the left, we have the Trader, which lets me get the crappy pelt out of my deck. And then on our right side of Tough Decision, the Fun Campfire or the Mycologist. But then I'm stuck with another shitty Trapper. But on the left side, I have a useless, relatively, Totem, which only gets me half a Totem, which doesn't do much right now, or a Trial, which is generally good. I gotta go for the right side. It is more fun. It's just also more painful. So let's see. What do I... What kind of Trials? Blood... Health or power? Blood health or power? I think it's health. I have two things with a lot of health and a couple with three. I th yeah, health is my most likely. I have only two with one health. So, I mean, if I hit those and none of the big ones, I guess I lose. But yeah, I hit a big one, so it's all good. Let's take a look. What am I feeling? Mud turtle with flight. Mole with rabbit hole. Rabbit hole is excellent. Undying grizzly. I'm going to take the mole with the rabbit hole. Because whenever I play it, I get a free creature in my hand that can be used to sacrifice. So now, the decision of the century. To me, the more fun play is the Mycologist. So that's how I'm going to go with it. I want a Stitched Pack Rat. I need the Stitched Pack Rat. It's another threat in my deck. 4 attack, 4 HP. Absolutely wonderful. And, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. The whole getting the pack is awesome. And maybe I would prefer to sacrifice the sigil onto something cheaper. But also having a 4-4, I think, just generally makes it more worth it. And it thins out my deck. It's just more fun. It's a big pack rat. You don't see those often, truly. Although I was coming across a sacrifice, but I have other things to sacrifice. I have the pronghorn still. Prong pronghorn will make for an amazing sacrifice. All right, let's just win this one quickly. No real thinking there. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, all the episodes were just recorded back to back to back to back because I needed to have a backlog of footage so I could go home for Christmas. And uh, Christmas was interesting this year. 
I had a good family get together. Now I have enough teeth for a golden pelt. But do I want it? It's a garbage card added to my deck. While it can be exchanged for a good card later, there's no guarantee that may even happen. And it makes me less likely to draw Mantis God. So there's just a bunch of terrible things about it. But still, the three health of the Golden Pelt is okay enough. It can be a decent stalling card. So I will let it be like that. All right, between these, I'm definitely going for the Sigil Sacrifice instead of just the pure Sacrifice. So obviously, that's going to be Pronghorn. Put that on something cheaper for sure. It might be this guy. This guy's often going to have more than one attack. So having that with Bifurcate seems awesome. And plus, this makes this a true threat. So, yeah, I get three attack on that, and I win the round. Seems great to me. All right, let's see how I'm faring against the fight. Interesting options coming up. Should be exciting. Their elks hide during my turn. Okay, good to know. Okay, so I got neither of my big threats this round. Ah, uh, that's a little scary. Do I just get down a turn one pack rat? Actually, yes, wait, I get a free item from the pack rat. So wait, I have a new threat. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. And I'll just get it down right here since it blocks the three damage of the wild bull, but it doesn't even kill my pack rat. And then I just wipe them out next turn. And the fact that it hides... Oh, but it swaps, come on! Ah, oh, the freaking swapping wild bull, son of a bitch. You know what? I'll draw from my deck. I have two bifurcators. Didn't work out. That's so sad. This is getting very scary. I think I'm going to use a scissors on getting rid of this porcupine just to make my life easier. Because I've had too many games in the past, too many battles where I didn't use an item early and then had to use more items later to catch make up for that, which is unacceptable. Uh, definitely going left. A mycologist and a campfire? Hell yes. Now, between these, Bone, no, we're going one cost. Yeah, Mantis is excellent. I love to see the Mantis. And let's see, I should be able to combine my crappy pelts here, which will be awesome if I ever make it to a trader, because I get combined items, and I get to get one garbage card on my deck, and this becomes better at blocking. I love everything about this. So Stitch Rabbit Pelt is probably one of the more fun things to do since it's pretty new to me. And we've been waiting for the campfire. Welcome back. HP on this. Between these, ooh, I could put it on the mole because this is an excellent blocking creature. The mealworm is not as important. I'd rather put attack on the mealworm, to be honest. I could put it on the porcupine so it just keeps dealing damage back. Or I could put it on the mantis so it lasts longer. Between these, I decide I'm going with the porcupine. Having this last longer seems very synergistic to its item, or so, to its sigil. All right, so the trapper, how do I fare here? Uh, I mean, I have some bifurcation. This should be favorable against the trapper. Yeah, okay. Let's go. But I do have to be careful. I do need to farm enough pelts, otherwise I lose. Okay, so their frogs are stinky. That is a very unfortunate one for me. Well, here's how I'm going to play them. I'm going to go porcupine right here. Just to get a free damage in. And might as well get a blocking rabbit pelt down right here. I could have kept it in hand, but I'm scared. It was a uh, play out of fear. Maybe not right. Only time will tell. I get it, I could keep it in hand for the trading, but that's not the only purpose of the pelt. It saves me 2 HP, which might be of the essence. <sighs> Can I afford to keep throwing my pelts in the way of danger, though? That's what I don't know. I only take one damage right now. I only take one damage. Maybe I should stop being a little scaredy pants. Yeah, so rip that. I get, I do get a pelt from the trap. Show me the man. God, I got bullfrog. Damn it. Well, the bullfrog doesn't even attack, which is just such a disappointment. I'm about to take one damage again. I mean, one damage is bearable. I think I just need to suck it up. Put the bullfrog here and keep hunting for 
any of my bifurcators. So thank you very much, Pelt. At least this rabbit don't attack. I mean, I can stall this out for a good minute still. Mantis God acquired. Excellent. All right, well, here's the play. I sacrifice the bullfrog. I put the Mantis God right here. I get rid of all of his attack. And life is good. Very nice. And now I can start coming back. Um, I am going to still try to get more pelts. So what I'm going to do is take a squirrel, place it right here so it dies to the leaping trap. Keep that in mind for later and slowly, slowly get to a dominant position. And it's going to be too late. Again, taking a squirrel and I'll just save it for when I get free items. So all I need is two open lanes and the Mantis God can win. And I have to make sure they have nothing that's blocking or, you know, decreasing the attack on my Mantis God. Nothing leaping out from me. Plus, I got a lot of things to trade with. Let's just get rid of the front row. Strange choices. It's all empty. I guess I just win now. Let's get some overkill. Flying ant off to the side. And a little possum just to add up everything. There we go. I still think that maybe if I do take out a creature, that the next creature should just move up. But, I don't know. Maybe that'd be like, if there's some harder version of the boss. Maybe that's something that could be added. Maybe it's not appropriate for low challenge levels. Alright, but things are looking great. Another pronghorn, a skunk, or a direwolf pup. Honestly, I think I actually want the skunk out of these three. Why? It's a one cost and the sigil for it is quite good. I know it's the least fun of the three, but let's be honest, my deck needs more consistency because it's still relying on some certain cards and we are going to the right. Absolutely, it's the dream, it's the trader and a campfire, a stupid trapper ahead of that, but I think this is well worth it. And plus, I get really cool things traded for with the crazy rabbit pelt. Some really interesting options. Magpie has an amazing sigil. I think I want the magpie so I can curate my good card. It allows me to draw any card of my choice. And between these, I can take another pack rat. Yeah, I'm going to take the pack rat. Also gives me future mycologist opportunities. Right, let's see now. I've been waiting. More HP. Damn it, I want attack! This game just can't give me attack, can it? The next best thing for that is probably the mole. Just so it can block literally everything for longer. I mean, if I draw it, it is the defensive unit. Man, I just want to attack at one of these campfires. Show me some variety, please. Well, alright, his reptiles level up quickly, but it doesn't matter because I drew Mantis God. Easy peasy. Lemon Squeezy. This deck is kind of insane. Because leveling up the Mantis God is going to happen every time you have this deck. You're always going to have the Ringworm and you're always going to have the Mantis God. So you're always going to get a good Mantis God. That's kind of disgusting. Alright. Speaking of disgusting, I hate this. I don't even think I'm going to get another trader. It, it probably is unlikely. I wish I wouldn't get a free Rabbit Pelt. I'm just going to take the rabbit pelt and go. I don't want to add more non-Mantis co God cards in my deck. There's a chance I don't even get a trader in the future, so I think I just have to accept it at this point. Let's get rid of... <laughs> it might be the rabbit pelt. Uh, is there anything else I could get rid of first, though? I mean, the rest of my cards are... So well, ringworm kind of stinks. It's kind of fulfilled its purpose of being sacrificial to the campfire. In this way, at least I get a starting bone. And the rabbit pelt maybe still could go away. But this right now, I imagine I could be wrong. You know, it's possible because there's so much of this game I don't know about. And I'm not really hurting to be without that knowledge. It's not the biggest deal to me. But having it gone means that nothing has changed as far as I'm considered. I'm concerned. All right. So his lizards deal one damage back to me. Okay. Well, who cares? <laughs> uh, nobody asked, literally. And let me do one extra damage. Even though it uh, it really doesn't matter. I've been neglecting the trader. I just like overkill sometimes. 
Yeah, honestly though, maybe I should just stop going for overkill. If this is the way I'm going to play the game. I decided I'm going to choose the sacrificial altar. I know it hurts to sacrifice what I think is going to be the magpie, but I'll make do. A couple good options here. Bullfrog for duplicate, but it might be too late. And then Corpse Maggots is a free card. I'll take the free card. Especially since I passed up my call. Just, oh, but there would have been a campfire on the left. No, it was too bad. I couldn't see that. Oh, man. Come on. This game just loves to punish me. I mean, the reason is because I wanted to get Magpie onto a one-cost unit so I would have another way of winning on turn one. And that way would just be playing the unit and then searching through my deck for Mantis God and then winning with Mantis God. So I am going to put it on. Yeah, Bullfrog seems good. Now I won't feel too bad about drawing it. So... That's my other win condition. Oh, but I get a campfire anyway. Saved. <laughs> okay, so their lizards are bifurcating. They go both ways. Oh, I just drew a regular mantis for once. You don't see that often. His bifurcating rattler scares me. Right, this might seem weird. I'm going to place the rabbit pelt here, blocking the rattler's attack and pass. Uh, because next turn I can just put the Mantis God where the pelt used to be and then win. Or I could draw through my deck for something better right now. Um, didn't quite get it, but it's almost there. Now he's got bifurcating adders that one shot. Brutal. This is a very unfortunate predicament, but I believe I need to pull the Rattler. Now that should attack head on. Which, no it doesn't. It's still bifurcating, even though it's mine and not his anymore. Well, hopefully that doesn't bite me. I definitely expected uh, the sigil to revert, but I mean, it's still fine. I have a good unit. It's just I can't kill him right now. Okay, then I've just decided I'm going to go for a little bit of free damage with the mantis. It's going to die, but damage is damage. Oh, but I get the bee. Okay, their beehives are amazing for me. Okay, so now because I have a free sacrificeable creature, I'll look through my deck again. Didn't get it, unfortunate. Oh, but I can win right now with the pack rat, so that's good. Let's get you down. Let's get the bee down. And let's sack for the pack. Bam. Little pliers on top. All right, so it all works out. That was also one of my good draws. There were a lot of ways to win there, come to think of it. It seems that my deck has a lot of good threats. Well, now I get to pick from a tribe. I don't know what tribe I want. I don't have a totem. They're all the same to me at this point. I'm going to go with Reptile, because sometimes eh, they're f cheap. Well, that didn't happen. Lovely. All right. Between these, I will take a Squirrel. That's actually quite fine. And I get my Campfire. So, what are we going to have? Finally, extra power. Wonderful. Now I can buff up my Mantis, and now I have another way to win turn one. Excellent. So, this is a very diverse deck. A very buffed up one. Uh, there's just so much love. And plus with all the bifurcation, I'm great against the angler. This shouldn't be too bad. His birds are stinky. So be it. Welcome, angler. So. Um. Mantis doesn't immediately win. Um, but don't they get there with pack rat? So here's how this is going to go. I'm going to smoke into regular Mantis just here. Why not? And then I can go Mealworm and Squirrel into Pack Rat. But first, I'm going to use the pliers just to let myself get a new pack item. And then I will go to the next phase. A boulder? That's all right, I guess. Yeah, go fish. Not really something I care about. Well, let's see. How bad is it going to be? I get three free damage, and actually I do get to win. But he's got, oh, but he's got a great white on the way. Well, here's how I have to play this then. I got to go squirrel into a blocking right here, and then I can win in two turns with the mantis. Oh, and I even killed a great white. Get owned. Nice tag team. Well, now I just win, so let's not think about it too much. 
All right, time for the moon. How does my campfired up team fare? I don't know what I'm looking for though when it comes to my final, um, a, a final buff thing, final event. Maybe just the sigil transfer. Cockroach ain't too bad. Another mealworm is quite funny. Mealworm is actually one of my better units. Not because of its effect, but because of the fact that it's usually a free sacrifice. But Cockroach is really good too. So I think I'm actually going to take the Cockroach and maybe try to sack its symbol. It's sigil. It's a really good sigil. Plus, it's free a lot of the time, and I have spare bones, so it's most likely going to get some mileage. Alright, so I got a sigil sack or a trader. I think it's got to be the sigil sack. I only have one pelt, right? So let's sack a sigil. I have a lot of choices here. Let's see. Let's put my boy Cockroach on something stronger. I could put it on the Mealworm, funny enough. Uh, Corpse Magus is not that bad either. Maybe I could put it on the Mantis God so I don't feel too bad if it ever gets smitten with the Prospector thing. Let's put it on the Mantis God so I can avoid a bad situation with it. I don't want it getting randomly sniped by maybe some poison unit. And plus it gets that funny eye thing. Which, as far as I know, is just visual, but... Hmm. You know, there's so much I don't know. The end is upon us. Let's see, do I get my turn one Mantis God and have this fight become trivial? Well, their insects level up. Which is not really something I'm concerned about. As long as I kill them fast, anyway. Let's see. Did, oh, I got the Bullfrog, so I can get the Mantis God, but the Mole Man is blocking. And it will block for a fat minute. Yeah, let me in fact just get down the Mantis God. So we go Bullfrog, and then show me the Mantis God. And then, you know what, I do want to play like this. I'll get the Squirrel Mantis God down right now. And then what I want to do is actually sack the Bullfrog for the porcupine it doesn't really matter exactly where i put it i'm put, gonna put it here so i can kill off his mantis god that's the main purpose i lose out on a lid oh wait i kill it anyway wasn't that funny well i guess the damage was utilized either way okay so now i'm just gonna draw a squirrel i mean we're gonna be going through this phase pretty quickly so i'll just let it be no need to prospect through my stuff. Stump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up, I'm gonna draw from my deck this time. Ooh, this is interesting. Because now I'm gonna take the squirrel and then go squirrel, squirrel into pack rat. Show me what you got. More bones! I have a ton of bones. Uh, yeah, that's not going to be... That was never a worry. I mean, I have one expensive bone unit, but it should be fine. Yeah, this deck seems really strong. I think I'm going to beat the moon. So this was just with plus one on the enemy's units. I think next time I'm going to try plus two. I just wanted to see what plus one looked like, like for comparison. But yeah, this fight is as good as over. Let's just uh, draw from my deck. <laughs> River Snapper is a useless son of a bitch. And the Mantis got pretty much solo. Or at least I expect it to. So let's get down Turkey Vulture 2. Yeah, it's GG. This felt like my easiest win yet. Wait, that plus one. Wait, did that just matter? Oh, it tried to matter, but it doesn't because it's the moon and not like a normal unit. Well, anyway, thank you for playing. That has been the Mantis God. This deck is OP. I feel like part of the reason it was so easy, this deck is insane. I think we got most of the mileage out of this deck. I, I'm okay with not doing it again just because of how strong it is. Because that was just a clean, clean win. Well, uh, the data is still in beta state. Well, regardless, I got a Wolverine. When Wolverine attacks an opposing creature and it perishes, this card gains one power. That's a very cool effect. And a challenge unlocked. I am limited to one life! The single candle challenge! Oh, oh, that is dirty. 
Well, that'll be worth checking out next time for uh, challenge level seven. Thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you have been having a wonderful holiday season. I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a wonderful day and peace.